still or what's going on? Are you trying to get It's super, super fancy. There, yeah. there we go. Alright. Alright. So, I'm Derek Edwards, and uh, I'm CTO of a local startup called Coach Logics. Um, we are actually running on a stack of uh, Ember, uh, Ember on the front end, and then uh, Django REST framework on the back end. Um, you know, basically, it's a it's an enterprise-facing software as a service platform, um, serving multiple multiple user groups. Um, but uh, you know, one of the things that we decided to implement in our platform was the use of JSON web tokens for our user authentication. So, decided to make that the topic of my talk tonight. Um, give you a bit of background. I think it's useful to really understand in case you're not already familiar with you know, what's, what's a typical user authentication pattern. And uh, probably one of the most common uh, schemes that's used uh, today and has been since about the beginning of, of time as far as web applications are concerned is session-based authentication. And you know, to really give you a general flavor for what this is, you have a user that submits credentials on some login form on your application. Browser submits those credentials. Server-side application is going to generate some kind of uh, session object that's retained either in memory, on disk, in some central store. And then your server is going to forward back a response along with the cookie that gets generated. And then when that user makes subsequent requests, um, the browser is going to include that cookie along with those requests. And that allows your application to basically match up some session ID with that session object that's in memory and be able to fulfill that request. This scheme works fairly well if you're working with a server-side rendered application um, and also if you're working on a smaller scale. But it pretty quickly runs into some challenges when you start to look at more modern web applications where you're working with Ember, where you're working with other client-side MVC frameworks, or if you're working with some kind of a native application for Android or iPhone. And the real reason for this is that increasingly your server-side application is becoming more and more of just an API layer. And most, you know, most people tend toward building RESTful APIs at this point. And by its very nature, session-based authentication uh, is not RESTful. It requires maintaining some kind of a session object, this basically maintaining a user state and as a result, um, any given server that's running your application won't necessarily have that full session information uh, for that particular user. This also results in kind of a hacky implementation uh, where instead of having just uh, a header that you can send along, you're stuck managing cookies, and if you're, you know, whether it's client-side MVC or whether you're writing a native application, that just gets a little bit messy. Um, furthermore, this makes scaling somewhat of a nightmare because as soon as you start spinning up multiple servers that are behind a load balancer, your user may hit one of many different servers that are behind that load balancer, and server A may not have uh, a session that was generated on server B. Obviously, there are workarounds for all of these issues, but at the end of the day, it's just not really a, a, clean, uh, a clean scheme to use in, in the context of more modern web applications. And that really leads me to JSON Web Tokens or JWT for short. And JSON web tokens are basically a portable, digitally signed user authentication token. Um, as you can see, it's it's pretty simple encoded token. You end up with this, this first segment that's basically a description of the hashing scheme that's used. That blue middle portion is actually a payload for the token, contains a user ID, contains any other kind of information that you might normally put in a user session. And then the final portion is actually the digital signature of this token. Um, the great thing about JSON Web Tokens is they're basically perfect for client-side MVC applications uh, as well as native mobile applications because they're this self-contained token you can store into local storage, you can throw them in cookies, you can just make, hold on to them for the current user session if you want. Um, I would go so far as to say that they're really a pretty good replacement for session-based authentication. I feel like that's where things are really headed. Now, the real reason that they're so powerful is that they take this effective idea of a session and move it to the client. Um, at authentication time, the server basically generates this JSON encoded object, uh, contains this session-like payload, uh, 
as well as a, digitally, a digital signature, and the client can choose to store that again in local storage, and then it simply includes this token along with headers when you're making subsequent API requests. And the server, one of the great things uh, from a server side is that you don't necessarily have to have access to a central user store to validate that this is a valid request. The token by its very nature being self-signed, uh, containing this digital, digital signature, actually can verify through simple hashing algorithms that this is a legitimate token and as long as the expiration time has not passed, it knows that it can actually fulfill this request. And the other great thing with JSON Web Tokens is that it follows much of the same flow as you're accustomed to with session-based authentication. Your user still submits credentials through a login form. The browser submits those credentials to your server-side application. But the difference is that instead of generating the session object that's held in the server's memory on local storage, it simply creates this JSON Web Token. And that gets sent back to the, the client-side application as a payload, and at that point, you can choose to put it in local storage, you can choose to throw it into a cookie, and then as long as you submit that token back with any subsequent request as one of the headers, the server is able to quickly verify that it is indeed a good token and it can continue to fulfill the request. Now one of the big benefits is that this enables you to make APIs that are purely RESTful. You don't have to worry about maintaining any kind of session object, you don't have to have this shared information between servers, as long as you're able to generate this token, any server that, that has possession of a shared secret is able to verifi verify it, its authenticity. So this means you can eliminate that session object and all relevant data that you need is contained in the token itself. It also means that you can move toward more of a clean, non-hacky implementation. You're getting back this token as part of your payload, and then you can simply include it along as one of the request headers. One of the big things as far as, you know, from our standpoint, building more of an enterprise scale application is that it enables us to scale very easily. Um, now that our APIs are purely RESTful, we can spin up as many servers as we want behind a load balancer could be scattered across multiple regions and there are no special load balancing uh, needs required. Everything simply just works. Um, now, there is one challenge with using JSON web tokens and that is that unlike session-based authentication, your session will not be automatically extended with subsequent requests. So you do have to do some active token management. Um, you, know, you actually have to submit requests to the back end to generate a new token based on an existing good token. Um, the good news is that this refresh mechanism is actually part of the spec. Um, most back end implementations of JWT already have this in place. So it's merely on the front end to know okay, we need to fetch a new token before the existing one expires. So with that, I mean, we, we're actually actively using JWT today in our production environment. Um, we found it to be very, very effective. It's very easy to use. Um, and there are some very good resources out there for learning more about the specification, as well as this very helpful JWT debugger tool. Um, I'd really encourage you to, to play around with that to learn more about the, the spec and uh, and then look into some of the native implementations. So that's about all I have. Any questions? Yeah. Have you had a chance to implement this yet? Yes. Yeah, we have it live in implementation on, on Coach Logics today. How would you compare it to like the traditional um, session based stuff? Like can you track the session or can you session like cache and like try to maintain like as far as like implementation time and um, we found it to be much, much simpler than maintaining a session cache. Um, we're actually, so on, on the front end, we're using um, Ember Simple Auth as sort of a framework for putting together this authentication um, module. And all that it required us to implement was basically the, the authenticator and the authorizer module. Um, JWT is actually a very simple spec to work with because the server is doing the bulk of work. As soon as we get our hands on that token, the front end doesn't need to do a whole lot with it other than just storing it. Um, and at that point, it's, again, it's kind of your choice whether you want to throw it into local storage, whether you want to, um, whether you want to create a cookie to hold on to it. Um, in our case, Simple Auth abstracts much of that away from us, so we're, we're merely concerned with deserializing a session back and verifying that it's still valid by 
answer it. <laughs> Uh, it's pretty open-ended. Uh, in our case, we kept the information and token itself to be pretty minimal. Um, I believe we're limiting it to user ID, uh, the actual login, and one or two other fields. Uh, those were all that we really needed in our case. Um, but depending upon how you're actually looking to implement it, you may, you may want to throw more or less into the token itself because there aren't really any hard limits. <laughs> yeah. if, if you choose to do so, yeah. <laughs>